Hello and welcome back to coverage here at Grand Prix Atlanta. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Paulo Vitor Domitorosa. And in our future match area, we have our first quarterfinal, Martin Yuza versus Piotr Glugowski. Yeah, and that is probably our two biggest names, I think, in the sub eight facing off in the first round. That's I guess right. Christopher Larson has a claim to it as well. He does, he does. Especially of late. Uh, in the meantime, though, Martin Yuza sticking with his guns, playing hollow on this weekend, and just running the tables during the Swiss. A really impressive showing by Martin this weekend, and yet another GP top eight for him. You get used to it at some point, but Martin has top eighted so many Grand Prix. Does he have the most of anyone? You know, he, he does, right? He I think he already it. did. Did he already have it coming in? Let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get uh, Frank Carson on that one, and we'll find out for sure. Yeah, and this matchup, uh, you know, also not very interactive, I think. Uh, I think in game one, Ironworks combo is a little bit faster than Hollow One, though being on the plate will help Martin a lot. Uh, it, those players are basically goldfish in game one, and I think that would tend to favor uh, Piotr Glagowski. Mm -hmm. But for games two and three, uh, Piotr doesn't really get much, and, and then Martin gets a, a good sideboard. So he gets to bring in Thoughtseize and Ancient Grudge, so I think... If he doesn't have an edge post port, he at least evens things out. Though side master Tothrist is a pretty good uh, delaying tactic from Piotr's sideboard that the Hollow One deck doesn't really have a good way of punishing. Okay. Yeah, Piotr Glugowski, the player on your right hand side of your screen, is also a popular streamer. He goes by Canister. So if you're a fan of watching players stream on Twitch here, uh, you may have seen him streaming from Europe. Yeah, and he plays this deck a lot on stream. He, he, I believe he became popular when he played Lantern over and over, which is weird because people hate Lantern. Yeah. But he was very famous for being a Lantern player, a very good Lantern player. Uh, then, of course, he topped it at PT with the, the Black Teamer deck, uh, and now he's been playing a lot of KCI, and that's what he's playing now. Confirmed, by the way, Martin Yuza is now too clear of Shuhei Nakamura for most number of GPs top aided ever. So truly the master. Oh, Hollow One hits the bin, but so does a Flame Wake Phoenix. This is, of course, off of a Goblin lore from Yuza. Oh, he's going to be a little bummed about that. Just has to pass turn back. Yeah, not that great. I mean, that is that is what you sign up for when you play Hollow One, <laughs> right? Unfortunately, <laughs> you know, it's, it's very hit or miss. And in this case, it was a miss, but he still gets to play a Gurma Angler and a Flame Wake Phoenix the very next turn. So, things not that bad for him, though he, he does have a pretty slow clock. And you consider that, you know, Canister uh, Piotr will have at least two more turns and can already play KCI next turn if he has it. There's that Gurmog Angler feeding on the graveyard and ultimately producing a 5-5. Five, 5-5 five. Five, five is plenty enough trigger Ferocious here, and in comes the Flame Wake Phoenix as well, and Martin even had another play. Yeah, I, I, I guess Martin bit. could conceivably have lethal next turn. He has a Lightning Bolt in hand, I believe. So he's dealing 10-13. So he finds a way to discard four cards, then he wins. Okay. Not easy to do, but it's certainly possible. Yeah. I mean, he can fail his looting, and then two Street Wraiths? That's there possible. There you go. There you go. Pewter's going to crack a chromatic star here for green mana. So that feels good for Martin because he knows his opponent just doesn't have KCI, right? Or doesn't have a fourth land, one right. or the other. Otherwise, he would just play the KCI and sack to start to the KCI. Yeah, so Pewter is probably considering whether he, he can afford to wait. Right, He could sack the Terrarian here as well and then try to find KCI and go off but he doesn't want to lose all his artifacts in the process of finding the KCI because then it would be just harder to do that when he does find it. But chooses to go for it anyway. And probably has enough artifacts in his hand to replenish what he just lost. I can play two Mind Stones now and a Chromatic Star on so top of full land. Even if he doesn't find it? Yeah. Okay. He found Ancient Stirrings, I think. So he's if he finds the KCI from the Ancient Stirrings, he's still in a good position. No, he doesn't have the Scrap Trawler either, and every loop in the deck demands both the KCI and the Scrap Trawler. <laughs> we have an update from our, our quarterfinals already. Yeah, we do. 
it seems like the, the in fact goldfish was a little bit faster. Yeah. From <laughs> You're right. You're right. He, that, that's Kazu Negri up a game over Jao Choka, and that's uh, in fact versus KCI, as you mentioned. We still haven't found out if they actually notice each other or not, but. <laughs> So, Golovsky is going to play out a Mind Stone here, taking his time, but uh, probably just going to have to cast another Mind Stone and hope that Martin doesn't put together lethal. Yeah, he was able to find a KCI. Okay, so triple Mind Stone. He's in a no K position if Martin doesn't kill him. Yeah, and it is difficult for Martin to kill him. He's going to need multiple cards to do so. But he does look pretty well set up if, uh, if he gets to have his turn. But you see him cross his <laughs> fingers. Don't kill me, bro. And here, I think it was an interesting moment. Uh, Peter was thinking about whether he wanted to play that Chromatic Star or not. right? And he's not going to do anything else with the mana. And so, in theory, there's no reason you wouldn't play it. Mm -hmm. But he's probably thinking about Burning Inquiry. Oh. So if Martin does have Burning Inquiry, the more cards he has in hand, the less likely he is to discard the KCI. And he doesn't need the mana. Once he plays the KCI, then he'll have plenty of mana. But since a lot of his mana sources are Mind Stones, he might have to search for those. Uh, sorry, sack those to search for more cards. Then he decides to go ahead and play the star anyway. But it was uh, interesting that he thought about it. Okay, well, there you go. Faithless looting out of the graveyard here for Yuza. Uses up th three mana. He's only got one available. Yeah, he's going to do 12 here, and plus his lightning bolt is 15. He has another lightning bolt in hand, but not enough mana to use it. Wow, so the full so pressure on Glugowski then. Yeah, he has to go off this turn, which I, I believe he will be able to. You know, he has that Inventor's Fair as well, and he has so much mana that it won't be hard for him to find the, the Scrap Trawler. Though he does have to play around the Lightning Bolt. Like, Martin has a Lightning Bolt that can be used to disrupt the combo if Piotr is not careful about it. And if he, if he spreads too thin trying to find the Scrap Trawler, he might run out of resources to play around the removal spell. Okay, so that's going to be the interesting thing to watch here. Lugowski gets to untap. He's got to be thrilled about that. And now... It's all up to him. If he can go off this turn and win, he will pick up game one against Martin Yuza. If not, he's certainly dead. Back up to six, thanks to Inventor's Fair. Plays his land for the turn. Four for Quark Clan Ironworks. There it is, KCI, the namesake card. And can he get the job done? Like you said, he's got all the tools to do it. Ooh, red mana? Hmm. So here we go. Chromatic Star is going to get sacrificed to the KCI. That's going to give him two colorless mana in his mana pool. Play a Mox Opal. Tap it for green. Sacrifice it. Make two more colorless mana. He's up to five mana floating. Thinking about Inventor's Fair. Counting up his mana. Yeah, he will have to do it at some point or the other, so. Sacrifices Inventor Sphere. Now I can go get the Scrap Trawler. Or whatever he wants. Yes, people, I know the red man is for Spell Bomb. But my point is, if Cancer ever gets to a point where he's looping Spell Bombs, Martin will just be dead, and we don't care how much red mana he has left. So he doesn't actually need to keep track of that. So it's just he for intimidation just factor? Yes. All right. Or, I guess, Martin engineered explosives yeah, there you factor. Go. <laughs> <laughs> We're going deep here in the booth, but there it is. Scrap Trawler into hand. And he's going to tap and sacrifice a Dark Steel Citadel to get three mana. Or actually just sacrifice it and use up his one green mana and cast a Scrap Trawler. So now if you're marching, when do you bolt that Scrap yeah, Trawler? Yeah, that's right? the question, isn't it? That's his only hope here. Yeah, you, you basically have to. Right, you bolt at some point, otherwise your opponent is going to run away with the game. But... Yeah, I mean, it's not getting much better for you. Can a still be able to do everything in response? Even if you, if you do it, but I think... And there are enough stars and spheres and, and things like that in the graveyard that he can just sack the two Mind Stones and return the two stars. But the thing that this will stop him from doing is also looping the Opal in the process. Ah, uh, okay. Because, you know, the star will get the Opal. That will happen. Uh, the star won't get the Opal, sorry, because he's responding to the star. Mm -hmm. And otherwise he would. 
So I think this is the, the only, the most effective time for Martin to do something, which doesn't mean he's going to win. Right. Like he's still, I, I think he's still a, a dog in this matchup, in this match, but it is the best he can do. So Pietro, I believe, should just sack everything. Like, he should just sack the two Mind Stones and then, well, add two mana and then sack the Mind Stones to, to return the two one-mana artifacts. He's going to do that in response while the Scrap Trawler is still alive. Make hay while the sun's shining, as they say. <laughs> yeah. He should probably just use it to draw a card rather than to sack for mana because okay. he doesn't need mana. He can make enough mana when he gets back to stars anyway. Yeah, this is an interesting characteristic for the the KCI decks is that usually uh, decks are kind of constrained on mana and cards about mm -hmm. an even amount. So you have to look at the game and see which is the constraining resource. But for KCI, you generate so much mana that cards is usually the resource. Oh, okay. So in this spot, he's giving up two mana for a card, right? Or yeah. rather three mana because he, he paid one to use the ability and then, uh, well, four mana actually. He paid one, you tap the, the sphere. The, sorry, the, the stone, and he didn't sack it, so, but he still thinks it's worth it because yeah. any card that he draws is potentially much more mana than that. And he's also considering doing this again, it looks like. Remember that Chromatic Star is on the stack with a lightning bolt on top of it targeting the Scrap Trawler. It's a little weird to see, but in response, Klugowski is going to sacrifice the Scrap Trawler to the Karkalan Ironworks, generating two mana and getting him back the Terrarian. Now the star resolves, plays Terrarian, sacrifices it. Yeah, well, see, that's even more interesting. He could have sacked the Mindstorm for mana there to get a star, and he, he chose, chose not, not to. to. Yeah, interesting. Because sacrifices another star here, Yeah, because to five mana. He knows he can use it to draw a card later on. So this is an even more extreme example of spending a lot of mana to have access to one more card. Okay, he's going to keep it rolling here. Karkalan Ironworks trying to go off. See if he can't find a way to kill Martin Yuza here. It's starting to look pretty good for Piotr. Actually, it it's looks up to like six. his... Yeah, but he's kind of running out of gas here. And he might need green mana at this point. Yeah, he, he decides he's, he's had enough colorless mana. And he needs green to potentially find uh, Ancient Stirrings. So what, what is the key card that he's looking for at this point? Well, he needs Scrap Trawler, but at this point, I don't think even Scrap Trawler would necessarily do it. Uh oh! Like he, not, now he's out of everything. So now, even if he does find Scrap Trawler, he well, he has another KCI, I guess. Okay. Well, here's an Icker Wellspring, but you're saying he's getting too low on mana at this point? No, I don't think he's getting too low on mana. But he has a Mox that he hasn't played yet either. Okay. And, okay. But he's <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have anything to do. He's got a lot of Kark Clan Ironworks. Yeah, but that's not enough. Uh-uh. Yeah, he had KCI flooded somehow. Yeah, he needed a Mew Retriever or Scrap Trawler somewhere. And of course, any star resets, interest stirrings, equal wellspring. Wow, but and that's going to do it. <laughs> Martin Yuza has to sit there and sweat out a pretty long turn from Pure. He <laughs> shows him <laughs> the other three KCIs. Yeah, and but Martin that's gives him a little wry smile there. But that's what we said about Martin's deck, right? He discarded a hollow one. We're like, well, that's what you signed up for. Yep. And Piotr is still playing a deck that has a bunch of blanks, and it is a combo deck. And like any combo deck, you can draw too many of one piece and not enough many like not enough of the other piece, and then your deck doesn't do anything. Really and interesting. And he, he hit his fail rate there. Interesting, too, because he really, really tried his hardest not to, right? You, you mentioned that he exchanged a lot of mana to try to get as deep into his library as he could, but he still couldn't find what he needed. Yeah, and that's the kind of thing that I think if you pick up the deck and try to play in a tournament next day, you're not going to do. Like, hmm. you're going to see, you know, oh, I can generate six mana. That's certainly worth more than a card. And then the game will progress to a point where you have 12 mana, and you're like, well, I wish I had this one more card. Right. And it is because he's played this deck for so long that I think it's so easy for him to identify the spots in which, well, here, actually, a, a card is worth more. Even though he didn't have infinite mana, right? He ended right. up with, like, four. Mm -hmm. But still, a card was worth more because if he found what he needed, that would have been enough mana. Well, Martin Yuza picks up game number one. Applying significant pressure to Glukovsky's life total and forcing him to go off. He did, but he fizzled. And Martin Yuzov 
is now up one game to zero and looking to make the semifinals with one of the next two games. Now that moves us, of course, into the sideboarded games here, Paulo. What are we looking at here as far as uh, the ability to combat each other's game plans? Yeah, so the games in game two should be a lot more interactive. This was basically a race, right? And Martin won the race. Uh, for game two, it's a little bit different. Martin gets a better sideboard, I believe, so the game should improve for him. He gets four Leyland of the Void, which if a Leyland is in play, then Piotr can't combo. And not only that, but it also stops some of the card drawing from happening, like Equal Wellspring or, or Chromatic Star, those don't work right. if Leyland is in play. So it's a pretty good card against uh, the KCI deck. Then he gets Thoughtseize, which you know is good against the combo deck as Disruption, and Ancient Grudge, wow. which you know gets to destroy anything. And obviously, it's very good in the Hollow One deck because even if you discard it, you still get to use it. Mm -hmm. Now, Ancient Grudge, usually not enough to flat out beat the KSI deck by itself, but when you add it up with all the other things, that's a pretty good card to have. I and mean, he's going to bring in 10 cards? I think so. <laughs> and he will take out Fatal Pushes and probably Lightning Bolts. Uh, I, don't, I don't like Lightning Bolt. And then four very other something. In this matchup. And yeah. And probably was one of each <laughs> yeah. of, of something else, which is what I do when I don't know what to do. <laughs> they call that shaving down the card. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's usually a result of I don't know what else I should take. So yeah, like, well, I don't want to be too wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, what mm -hmm. if this card is really good? I <laughs> he has to take out probably some number of Tazigur slash Gurmak Angler, mm. uh, like probably like one Tazigur or one Angler is, is correct to take out, but. How Just aggressively would you assume he will mulligan to the uh, ley lines? Oh, not very much. Like we, we saw some matchups uh, in this tournament already, where like well again one player went to one card. Yeah, that was in pretty search, aggressive. In search of ley line. He did not get there. Spoiler alert. All right, so Martin won't but be doing that. No, it? because I don't think the game is as hopeless for Martin as it was for those other decks. Because when you look at you know the deck that we saw, it was black white zombies versus dredge. I really could not imagine how it would win the game if it didn't have Leyline. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you have a functional 7, but you don't have Leyline, you're not going to win. Mm -hmm. And this is not the case here. I think Martin can have a hand without Leyline and still win, which, you know, he just did. Mm -hmm. He has pressure, he has other pieces of disruption. So this is not a, a Leyline or bust game for Martin, so we're not going to see him mulligan too much. Though he does love mulligany. Uh, every time we have a discussion about mulligany, and I think the answer is mulligan, I can just go and talk to Martin, and I know he'll back me up. <laughs> Because he wait, wait, I have everything. to know, who do you uh, bring into the conversation if you think that, that, that it's a keep? Well, most of the who time, keeps he, if I think it's a keep, everyone else would think it's a keep, so I don't need to bring anyone <laughs> okay, to the conversation. Okay. But Sam Party is my go-to keep guy. <laughs> okay. They're like, keep Sam, it. why do you think one land, two Emrakuls, Ulamog, but like, <laughs> and one Chromatic Star, and you're on the draw. He's like, yeah, that's great. Good game. enough, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Now, for the other side of the table here, though, Glukowski is playing a pure combo deck and these usually don't have a lot of wiggle room as far as sideboard cards go. Is that the case here? Well, he actually has decent sideboard, but only in the sense that it interacts with Martin's sideboard. Mm. So Martin has Leyland, so he has to have Nature's Claim to deal with that. And then it also deals with Hollow One uh, as a bonus. So it, it gets one of the threats from Martin and also gets the hate card. And I think Psy Master Totherist is pretty good against Hollow One because Hollow One doesn't have many ways of pushing through. So you buy a lot of time and it's one of your ways of beating Leyline of the Void. So if they resolve Leyline but have a somewhat slow hand, uh, then you can just play Psy and win the game off of that, which is part of the reason I think Martin it will not be inclined to mulligan uh, uh, any hand mm. into a Leyline mm -hmm. hand because you know if he goes to four and has a Leyline, he's just going to lose to Psy anyway. And then you have the removal spells, which I don't think he should have. It was actually a big uh, point of disagreement uh, when we were testing for the, the PT25 uh, quarterfinals, semifinals rather, uh, or finals, when they were playing the, the KCI versus Hollow One matchup, and we were the KCI side, and we thought, well, you shouldn't bring in Lightning Bolt, and Ben thought he should, and he did, and they were bad. So, <laughs> <laughs> scoreboard. <laughs> Wow. Uh, <laughs> using using your uh, pulpit here very well, <laughs> I see. Okay. Because I think the issue Scoreboard. here... <laughs> the issue uh. here is that uh, y it's kind of like a one-for-one -one game. You know, there's grudges, which is a two-for-one, but there's thought seizes. And there are a lot of, uh, you know, disruptive elements. And you can't afford to have a card that does nothing. So it slows your, their clock a little bit. Yeah, if you bolt the, the flame wake... Blame Blade Adept, it might buy you enough time, but what if they have Hollow One or Grimmagangler or Phoenix or Bloodgast, then, yeah. you know, they thought seize your case, you need to draw an artifact that draws a card, and then you draw 
a Lightning Bolt. I don't think it's good enough. Mm. Uh, Galvanic Blast is a little bit better because it kills Hollow One mm -hmm. on top of killing the, the Flame Blade. So we might see that one. But you're already diluting your deck with Claim and Psy. Right, how many known artifacts can you have? Because sometimes, you know, what happened with Piotr Gorgowski this game, he went off and he lost anyway, and he was pretty unlucky to do so, but he, he won't need to be that unlucky for that to happen if his deck is all nature's claims and right. bolts and size. Ooh, look at this. Martin Yuza has Leyline of the Void here on turn zero. That's going to give him an advantage right off the bat as Pierre Glugowski is going to have to find an answer for that before he can combo off, or he's going to have to use Psy Master Thopterus to, uh, to make a whole bunch of Thopterus and try to win the game that way, or at least prolong the game long enough to find one of his answers for that ley line. So good start for Yuza, exactly what he wants to see in that opening hand. Oh, Mistress Bubble. Okay. Right, yeah, we don't always see in KCI. In fact, I had no idea he was playing it. Just oh, there is one. one. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, this is definitely not one of those matchups where you're like, well, okay, ley line, we're done here. Find a way to remove it or die immediately. Like, uh, Peter will have options. Uh, he has, again, Psy Master Top Thirst, and he probably has four copies of Nature's Claim. And, you know, while his deck, it's not easy for him to get it with, with the ley line in play. Like, some of his card drawing doesn't function. The rest of his card drawing does function. Mm -hmm. So it's not like he's doing nothing. You know, if you're a deck like Dredge, well, before you answer the ley line, nothing you did throughout this entire game is relevant, right? You start the game from the point where the ley line is gone. Whereas for Piotr, he can play Ikor Wellspring, he can play the KCI, he can play Scrap Trawler, and the moment he destroys the ley line, he can just win the game on the spot. So he can develop his board, uh, albeit some of the card drawing won't work. Well... Big question here, of course, is if Martin Yuza is able to uh, apply some pressure, because, of course, he has his Leyline of the Void. And right away, yes, Flameblade Adept hits the battlefield. So good start for Martin on his first turn of the game. Oh, yeah, that's probably the best. I mean, bearing some, you know, Burning Inquiry, uh, Street Wraith, multiple Hollow One scenarios, like if we're being realistic, uh, this is probably the best opening, Leyline into Flameblade Adept. Got a few uh, match updates for you, by the way, here. <coughs> Kazu Negri, the one uh, playing Infect versus the KCI deck, 2-0. Okay, not so, a surprise. No, that was very quick. The quickest deck, as you said, if left unchecked in the format, and it was left unchecked, so that happened very quickly. And then Christopher Larson, also on a quick deck, Hardened Scales, has defeated Bridgevine from Takumi. So that's game. Well, those two are into the semis. Okay, yeah, and that is a matchup, the Bridge Vine versus Hardness Chaos, that I think could realistically go either way. Uh, but if both players have a good draw, I think the case, the, the Hardness Chaos draw is going to be better. It just goes over the top. And it can also sacrifice a lot of its creatures on its own mm -hmm. to get rid of opposing bridge from below. So that is kind of like your nightmare. You oh, know, the whole sure. deck is about playing, you know, zero mana cards and sacrificing stuff over and over to get zombies. And they just have a walking ballista in play. They can <laughs> just stack at any point or a Ravager. In fact, they often just want to. Yeah. <laughs> it's good for them to, to have their creature die. Uh-oh, glass is off here for Pyotr, so it's all business now. <laughs> So Martin, yeah, doesn't have much going on. No, not really. He plays his land, attacks, and there's a Street Wraith now in the bin, too, so not a whole lot. And there is the Psy and the KCI in, in, in Piotr's hand. And he even he could have used a Pyro Spellbomb to kill the Flame Blade Adept, and he just chose not to. You know, two damage is not that much. That is a pretty threatening card, but not at this stage of the game. If Martin had played, like, a Goblin Lore, then maybe we would have seen this Pyro Spellbomb. Uh-huh. Are we just going to see Psy Math Master Thopterist here, or is Piotr going to run out the KCI? Uh, oh, I think, KCI? We'll, I think we'll see Psy. Mm -hmm. like, Piotr will know that there's not no one card from Martin's deck that can immediately kill it. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I guess there's Fatal Push uh, if Martin uh, kept that in his deck. He does have a fetch land over there. Piotr's looking a little tortured here. I think I should just go for it. Like, you're never going to get more than one token anyway, right? So it's only a matter of whether you want to use excess mana to to potentially sacrifice artifacts to draw cards. But when that ley line is in play, sacrificing stars and, and wellsprings doesn't really even work. So I would just play Psy here and play my one artifact left, the, the Terrarian. 
I don't think he has many other choices. There he is. Sign Master Thoptra hits the battlefield here for Glugowski. This is a potential problem now for Yuza. Ugh. Cracking a fetch. Is he going to Ancient Grudging response? Oh, yeah, and if Pyotr, if Pyotr had sacrificed that uh, that Paris Pebble, he wouldn't even have mana uh, because of the Mox Opal, so that would be a bit awkward. We have one but more match going besides this one for our quarterfinals. Pei Wan Zheng is on Bant Spirits. Yoshihiko Ikawa is on Tron. They're tied at a game apiece. And we're just in game two here, so that one may be over by the time we're done. And if that's the case, we'd be right on to the semifinals here in Atlanta. If you're just joining us, Oh, wow. Thanks for coming along. Pierre passed the turn. He didn't play an artifact. So uh -huh. he did he not have one to play? He did. He had a Terrarium, but I think he he wants to keep up the Pirate Spellbomb, potentially. He doesn't want it to get Ancient Grudged, which I believe probably would happen. The thing is that if you're playing a bunch of artifacts, how much do you care about that Flame Blade at that, right? Not that much. Not that much. But we could see a sequence from Marty here that goes, you know, burning inquiry into putting a Flame Blade Phoenix. Uh, Flame Wake Phoenix in the graveyard, for yeah, example. In that case, and then you'd really be ha sad you didn't have your two damage spell at the ready. All right. Yeah. I have to say, I would have played the Therarian here, but he's got a lot more experience with that deck and matchup than I do. So I'm going to defer to him on that. Okay. But yeah, the reasoning from him was definitely to keep that Pirate Spell Bomb up. And I, I wonder how much Martin thinking on turn two changed that decision. Because Martin thought about something, and there are not many things he can think about other than Ancient Grudge. If he's not going to do anything, anything else I believe he would just do. So maybe he is aware of the fact that there's Ancient Grudge, or strongly suspects the fact that there's Ancient Grudge, and doesn't want to expose his Pirate Spell Bomb to it. Kind of interesting. Martin has Burning Inquiry in his hand, chose not to cast it here. Well, he, he knows uh, Peter's hand. Yeah, he knows it's just Cart Clan Ironworks that was left over. Yeah, I think, I guess he could have cast it. He, I mean, he just maybe really wants to cast the Ancient Grudge because if he casts the the Burning Inquiry and doesn't discard the Ancient Grudge, then he doesn't have enough mana to cast it, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure why he wouldn't do it. Also, if you... Yeah, he could have also played the Burning Inquiry and then played the Thoughtseize, uh, hoping, hoping to keep the Thoughtseize. See what he got, yeah. Yeah, well, it's just that you would rather thought seize later than before because then the the card quality in your opponent's hand is going to be uh, lower on average at the end of that so the order does matter here but of course you risk discarding that thought seize yourself Kukowski declined to use his pyrite spell bomb last turn just took the one from the flame blade adept yeah, this is a much more deliberate game than yeah. than one would expect in the sense that, well, first, the, 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 the players are being deliberate, but that people aren't, they aren't acting mm -hmm. very much. Like, everyone is being so patient. Sai getting rowdy here. Chipping Martin down from 13 to 12. And just a pass of the turn here for Glukowski. What's the kind of cards that he wants to see the most? Just action, wellspring, that kind of thing? Well... Anything that cycles and gives you a token would be good, right? Wellspring yeah. replaces itself and it gives you a token, so he wants to see that. Uh, Nature's Claim would be a good card to see. So that he can open the floodgates for the potential to go off at some point here. Yeah. But Belling mostly. The void he's looming over this battlefield. <laughs> he's fine. He's really valuing keeping that Pyrrhic Spellbomb mana up. Certainly is. <laughs> and is Yuza leaving back the Flame Blade Adept now? I don't think he has Burning Inquiry. I think that is an Ancient Grudge. Oh. And three lands. Yeah. Okay. So it's just Ancient Grudge. That's why. Now well, here we go. Karklan Ironworks is going to generate a Thopter. Martin says, hold on a sec. Is it Burning Inquiry? I'd be shocked if it was because Martin didn't cast it and he has three lands in hand. Must be Ancient Grudge. They do look similar. Yeah. Wow, they're very similar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that one is Ancient Grudge, so that's on the stack now. What is it targeting? Good question. 
Oh, okay. Well, so with the so he did let him get the thopter, and then he so just the thopter is in play. Yeah. Well, but then yeah, but we when did he do this? What is his? I guess Piotr just passed. I guess he would not have priority otherwise. Yeah, because it's when you cast, right? So you couldn't target it with the the thopter in. Yeah, it looks like uh, Glukowski said, "Okay, well, I'm done." But what happened? Did he get his thopter? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, that's probably what happened then. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Martin has had his ley line and had his flame blade adept and the Thoughtseize and an ancient grudge, but he doesn't have any pressure other than that. And you know, the, the flame blade adept is a very strong card in this deck, but not when you aren't discarding anything. And it just gets for one a turn, which is definitely not enough. Flooding out pretty hard here. Land go now from Yuza. Just no threats to be seen. Leaning really hard on this ley line of the void, but plan B for Glugowski could come together quite cleanly. Ooh, and there's an Icker Wellspring. Draws yeah. him another card and could keep it flowing here to keep these Thopters rolling. Though it looks like maybe he's hit another speed bump. So he says, taste it with this Thopter. Down to 11. Maybe he's been holding on to this spell bomb to just finish off Yuza. <laughs> it's a big finishing <laughs> no. move. I mean, his one is a 10. <laughs> so. And another land. D doesn't he have another KCI in his hand? Uh, I mean, he could just play it. But, but now he's keeping up mana to sacrifice artifacts for Psy. Mm. Trying to reload. Ancient Grudge. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that it could work. He's really not going to draw a card. Right, it's not that bad. Whatever he targets, though. Yeah, he did target a Wellspring, it seems. So he wants to get rid yeah. of that before Piotr can, can kill the Ley Line. Mm -hmm. right? Because this is a play that Piotr can make at any point. The sacrificing. All right, well... There was a, either a burning inquiry or <laughs> an ancient grudge off, <laughs> off the library for Yuza. I think this one was an inquiry, though. Well, they really are just the same card. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, I'm surprised that Piotr has been so conservative, honestly. I, I would think that with Martin at 10, he might just spell bomb that flame blade add up and start attacking. Like, he could have attacked with Sight like two turns ago. And now he's having to keep stuff up. But he doesn't know that Martin's hand is all lands, right? He doesn't want to well, go it was. all was. Martin just one. discarded three lands to his half of the Burning Inquiry, so... Okay. That's some business. That's a great Burning Inquiry. No kidding. Let's see what Yuza found. It looks like he's got another Ley Lion of the Void. Another Flame Blade Adept as well. We're finally going to see the uh, Pyrite Spell Bomb used? I think this game will end and it won't be used. <laughs> no, it's not going to go the distance. He's finally going to take down that Adept. Uh. The Burning Inquiry was inspirational enough there for, <laughs> <laughs> for Glukowski to go ahead and get rid of it. What? Well, Martin has a replacement. And passes the turn back. Who's ahead here, Paulo? Who's going to win this thing? Oh, I think Piotr is ahead. I mean, I don't know what Martin drew. Right. right? He just drew two. Well, we know cards. one of them's Ley Line of the Void. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, then I, th I believe Piotr is like firmly ahead, I would say. The Hollow One deck does have ways of catching up. Like, he could just draw Goblin Lore into two Hollow Ones and a Gurmag Angler. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that, that would get him back in the game. But it's very unlikely, I think, at this point. And even though Peter Goss didn't really do anything other than play Psy, it seems like it's going to be enough here. It's and interesting watching this matchup. Both players so aware of the card Burning Inquiry. 
Oh yeah, not playing your extra lands is really <laughs> important here. Though when your extra land is like Darstil Citadel, you probably just want to get it into play because you can sacrifice it for a card anyway. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and run out the uh, the Ironworks as well. That generates yet another Thopter, and Martin User really needs some action here. Yeah, and Cheddar playing conservatively here, he could have attacked with an extra Thopter, but then would have, you know, would be worried about potentially having to block the, the edit with Psy or taking a lot of damage. And the size to wait out a little bit. Faith, faithful saluting off the top for Yuza. I think we'll probably see Piotr sacrifice something at the end of the turn. Boy, he found another Leyline of the Void with that faithful saluting, so. Yeah, he did find a hollow one. I believe he has Ancient Groja as well. <coughs> but yeah, maybe Piotr will not sacrifice anything because he doesn't want to expose himself to Ancient Grudge. Martin could attack here. Like, if he has Street Wraith, then he really punished Piotr for blocking. But Piotr could just double block with the top there. But then he can Ancient Grudge one, but then Piotr can just sack both to draw a card. So it's not really a good spot for, for Martin either way. So Gugowski says, sure, let's trade. Fine by me. Yeah, that's basically a delaying tactic from Martin, mm -hmm. which is fine. Like, he wasn't going to push through with that edit anyway. Ooh, here's Nature's Claim. Ooh. It's debatable which one you even want to target at this point, but... <laughs> <laughs> Not for Kogowski. He's snapping off that ley line. But Yuza, with Ancient Grudge in hand, is going to respond by targeting the Kark Clan Ironworks and really taking away... Piotr's ability to uh, combo off. He's going to get a card, though, thanks to Sai. Yeah, and then Martin still has the chance to answer Grudge, the, the Mox, or, or the token, while Sai, well, you know what, Piotr has stepped out, mm. but probably doesn't want to do that. Still more valuable to keep the ancient Grudge there, I think. And yeah, Martin, you know, just discarded two Ley Lines, so that's the perfect time to play a Nature's Claim here. And you now? could tell Martin was thinking about keeping one of the ley lines around just in case, but he decided against it. And let's see if he gets punished for it here. Well, I don't think he could realistically <coughs> keep it. Not with the Ancient Grudge as the other card. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Ooh, Kirk Clan Ironworks. Yeah, that's just going to be an expensive 1-1 one -one at this point. But yes. There's also a Buried Ruins, which currently cannot return anything, but potentially, you know, far along in the game will be able to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're probably just going to see now Ironworks and then a block with a Thopter and sack both Thopters. I would imagine is what's going to happen. Or he could sack even the Mox Opal because he can bring it back with the Bird Ruins if he really wants to. But I imagine at this point, he Piotr is not going to try to race anymore. Like he, He'll attack here because it's free. He's going to get a Thopter anyway when he plays the KCI. But his game plan isn't necessarily race as, as, mu as much as it was before. He yeah. can actually find engines now. And of course, he can just play four artifacts and, and win with side tokens. But he has a bit more leeway now. Cards like Chromatics try to get a lot better, and Equal Wellspring got a lot better. So. Mm -hmm. Martin use it patiently. Playing this game, he does now have Hollow One on board versus Cyan Thopter. Ironworks not doing much at the moment, but as you just mentioned, Paulo could be important. Street Wraith for Yuza is going to put him down to 11 life after he cycles it. He could have cast it. Uh, Doesn't do a ton here, I guess. Like and yeah, he's going to flash back Faithless Looting now. Oh, he found a Phoenix. Yeah. And another Faithful Saluting as well. Yeah, that's not bad for him. Yeah, Phoenix versus Thopters is nice. So so here we're going to see Piotr a little bit punished by, for attacking with that Thopter, I think. Because I, I believe his ideal play here would be to block with the two Thopters and sack both for Psy. I see. He's now he's going to take two damage instead. He's going to take two damage for dealing one mm -hmm. in a match where his life total is much more important, I think, mm -hmm. in, in a position at least. So... Whoa, he took it. Oh, okay. All right. Never mind then. Yeah, he's down to 10 now. 
So the race might be on. I don't know exactly where Martin is at. I felt like he was lower. But Well, Martin did get gain for life off of the Oh, that was plane. why. Okay, so he yeah. was lower. Okay. He was indeed. Terrarian was the draw step there for Glugowski. Yeah, and we might even see, you know, him sacrificing the Terrarian and potentially the Mox here or potentially a a thought there and just bringing the Terrarian back with the Bourbons and replaying it. But he does have to, to be careful. There is an Ancient Grudge still in Martin's graveyard, right? <laughs> or is that Burning Inquiry? Yeah, that's an Ancient Grudge. <laughs> yeah, there's the Ancient Grudge, and so he doesn't really want to tap out. Sacrifice these two things to sigh. So Martin can grow something in response, but... Yeah, he draws one card off of Terrarian's ability and one card off of Psy. Mm -hmm. Finds in their Mox Opal, and there's another Thopter, and you can see what Psy does here. It's drawn him a bunch of cards and is responsible for his entire board state as far as creatures go. Can get out of hand. He just needs to keep finding artifacts to cast. Yeah, so is, is he going to try to be super aggressive here, attack with everything that he can, or is he just sitting back? It's interesting because last turn he took all the damage, indicating perhaps he is interested in just a straight-up damage race here. He looks like he's doing the math right now. Okay, I attack you down to this, and you attack me back. What happens? Yeah, and he is a 10 now, so he could get Bloodgasted. Uh, Bloodgast will have haste, which mm. means Sai might stay back just for insurance. But... Everything's staying home. Okay, so he wants to trade with the Hollow One? Is that what's happening? Could be. That's not going to happen, though. There's a, that can't be what he's thinking. He might trade with the Phoenix, but that would just come back next turn. Because he knows Martin has Ancient Grudge. Right. So he won't be able to trade. But I think worst case scenario is he attacks. And, you know, Martin attacks. He quadruple blocks. Then Martin uses the Ancient Grudge. And he just sacrifices his, his four Thopters to draw two cards, which isn't as bad for him. Gets rid of the Ancient Grudge. But I don't know how good it is for him if Martin just lets it happen. If Martin just lasts the Hollow One, trade with the four tokens, then I don't know if, that, if that's something that Peter actually wants. I think he might prefer the two cards. Well, Goblin Lore first things first for Martin. All right, you pick them. These three growing away. There's another Goblin Lore. An Ancient Grudge and a Flameblade Adept. What a weird matchup. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Martin's hand is real <laughs> stinker, though. He's got Lan and then that other Leyline of the Void. Maybe the Leyline of the Void's good now. Oh, he drew a fourth? Yeah. He might be. Maybe he just plays it. I mean, it doesn't seem like that's the way that this game's going, but that being said, Glogowski does have Karklan Ironworks on the battlefield. Yeah, I mean, he's not that so far from just comboing Martin out. Right. Though Martin does have two copies of Ancient Grudge, so I guess he, he, he's not that close to either. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that I, I believe Pure is... Draws will as a whole be better. Uh, he has that side in play already, so there are a lot of sequences he can have that are pretty good. Yeah, Martin's just going to play it safe here and run out the Leyline right now. Of note, Leyline of the Void doesn't exile the cards that are already in your graveyard, only the ones that will go there in the future, so he gets to keep those, the Terrarian and the Mox Opal sitting there, just in case. Yeah, so not the Terrarian now is going to be much worse for, for Pietro. Right. Never getting that card draw off of it. Yeah. He can still try to race. Like, he could attack for three here and then play two Terrarians, uh, like Bird Runes one back, and then it would be two more tokens. 
then you know he takes six damage and goes to four. But Marty will be at seven, who have five power in play. So if he can muster two blockers the previous turn, I think this is probably what he should do. Though he can just he can just jump block with both. That's probably better. Yeah. He, so he plays two Tyrannus here, makes two tokens, attacks for three, then blocks both and draws a card, and just like tries to repeat that mm -hmm. for the rest of the game, basically. Right. There we go, double Terrarian, double Thopter, jamming for three, and here we go. Piotr Gugowski's game plan has finally come into uh, sight for us. Seven damage, or excuse me, seven life left for Yuza, who's top decking. Yeah, so it is interesting that Piotr kind of shifted plans in the middle here because he didn't attack last turn. That's right. He could have gotten in for some extra damage here, but chose not to. And Glugowski looks like he's content to just chump block just the hollow one, take two damage, and sacrifice one of the Terrarians there to get, the car to get a card from Psy. Another hollow one off the top here for Yuza. Yeah, Marty might have to start healing top their tokens. In fact, I think he should have killed one on his turn while Piotr was tapped out. and didn't. I, I believe he didn't have the chance to, to sack it for Psy. He only had one mana left, I think. But maybe I'm missing something. Maybe. Maybe he had extra mana. But yeah, I think this is probably Martin. Martin will have to start ancient bridging. Top tier here, especially because I think he has two grudges and only access to one green mana. So he has to cast a grudge now. I don't think he can take three damage. And then just try to, to you know, win next turn. He only pulled one grudge and one faithless looting at the top. Perhaps he just has one grudge in his yard. Yeah, that is possible. I think he still has to do it though. Like he is under a lot of pressure, and he's not going to kill Piotr at, at this point. Piotr can just block both hollow ones and draw a card. Yeah, it gives him such a good chance of being able to repeat the process every time he does it. And he's just throwing away artifacts to draw cards at this point, but none of the ones that affect the board directly. Yeah, he, he has more moxes, so he can oh, just yeah. keep doing that. Those are just 1-1 one, one flyers and then cards later on, so... Things starting to look pretty good for Glugowski here. This is game two of our quarterfinal. Martin Yuza won, at least compared to this game, a quick game one. Yeah, <laughs> this game is taking forever. This game is taking forever. It is, it is a long game. Lots of, it, lots of hard decisions on both players. They've both been very deliberate and patient. And there it is. You mentioned it a second ago. Ancient Grudge to kill a Thopter, but Glugowski says, sure, I'll just sacrifice this land and the Thopter to draw a card off of Psy. And boy, that activated ability has been a real backbreaker here for Yuza. It has just fueled the fire to keep Thopters coming onto the battlefield. Two to three a turn for Glugowski over the last couple of turns. And now you can see how far ahead he is. He's got Yuza down to five. He's still at a relatively comfortable eight life facing down just kind of a bunch of big dumb creatures, right? None of these things do a great job of getting through. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, Martin is going to force at least one block, right? Yeah. But if Martin has nothing, then Piotr can just block Hollow One with Psy and go to, uh, you know, two life, which is very dangerous. He can get lightning bolted and then he can... Well, not anymore, but Martin could also play a post-combat Flame Wake Phoenix. And that would be able to block it. Okay, Looting and Bloodgast hit the yard after this Goblin Lore, but what was the card that he actually got in his hand? Was it Tassiger? be a little awkward if it were. He couldn't actually cast it right now, could he? Yeah. He, he left Ancient Grudge Mana up. Mm. It's not... I don't know if he... Is it or not? So if Piotr doesn't play around been. Lightning Bolt here and there is no grudge, then Piotr wins, right? Mm -hmm. he, he can just chump block and take, take six and go to two and win next turn. But do you risk it when you're in such a better position? 
That's what he's thinking about right now. Also, there's a, a real chance, and I think uh, way very likely that Martin doesn't have Lightning Bolt in his deck anymore. Like, I wouldn't, and I think Piotr wouldn't, so he has no reason to assume Martin would. And in fact, he's probably checking. He's like, well, I've, I've seen 40 cards from your deck, no Lightning Bolt, what are the odds? They're all on the bottom. Uh huh. Also looking for Ancient Grudge. Yeah. So in this spot, you've seen no Lightning Bolts. Is that more or less likely that your opponent has Lightning Bolt right. in hand? Yeah. Right. Because I mean, it depends on how many cards. At some point, it probably becomes more likely. Yeah, I think, you know, he's seen enough to believe that Martin probably sided it out as opposed to, oh, they were all in the bottom. I think so, too. Yeah. I mean, there's a sliding scale, right? Yeah. Like, you get to 56 cards. <laughs> you know, are you assuming that the last four are lightning <laughs> bolts or that they don't have them? And there's a number before that where you can start to make similar assumptions. Yeah. But it looks like he's decided that he's far enough ahead here, PV, to just go ahead and double chump block, take a couple of damage, and try to win this game over the next couple of turns rather than uh, next turn. I think that's valid. Yeah. Also, if Martin does have Ancient Grudge, then obviously everything changes because he doesn't have lethal either way. Mm -hmm. Also, there's always a chance that Martin has, you know, a couple lightning bolts. He could have one left in his deck or two. So even if... I, I believe he's had all, all of them, but... But he could have shaved them, yeah. That's possible, too. So Peter can... Should he just attack and play three things? He certainly could. He has KCI, so he has plenty of mana. Like, if he attacks with everything, puts Mart down to one, then he's going to play three artifacts, one of them's Crap Trawler. Ooh, let's see if there's an Ancient Grudge. I guess I'll never know if it's Grudge or Inquiry. No, but it's impossible. Nobody could say. He might not <laughs> even know. Once again, though, we see Glagowski doing the kind of, okay, you're going to do this, and then I'm going to do that, and then you're going to do this type of math, and mapping out the next turn sequence or two. Oh, he has two Scrap Trawlers. Okay, so he has plenty of blockers. Wow. He might just sack the Iron Wars to play another Iron Wars here. That's what I would do, I think. Or sack the Mox Oppo, either way. But I think you should just get as many top threes into play as possible. So you don't die to some random combination of Blood Gas and Flame Wake Phineas is going to the graveyard. It's going to play Ultimate Conservative here, get him down to three, but leave back Psy, along with two Scrap Trawlers and three Thopters. Going to be very difficult for Yuzu to get through all that. Yeah, but possible for Martin to survive another turn, depending on what he has. Yeah, that's true. Still, Glugowski in a commanding position at this point. Looking to try to even things up one game apiece against Martin Yuza. Yeah, and it looks like he will. I don't think Martin drew enough to, to get back in this. So if Martin attacks with everything, we'll probably see the Phoenix getting through and the other two being chump blocked, and then Peter will have six attackers left, any three of which are lethal. Yuzu turns everybody sideways. Gets another Flame Wake Phoenix back from the graveyard as well. I think we're just going to see Martin concede here. I guess yeah. I guess there's no harm in just waiting one turn. Yeah, it just only takes another you know? second. Yeah, we've, we've, we've only waited. Ah, that's what he had drawn before was the Gurmog Angler. Yeah, it's, it's only been 80 minutes, so. Yeah. So there's no rush. <laughs> take, take your time, Martin. <laughs> uh. But yeah, when you're at three, your point has five attackers. So we're probably just going to see, realistically speaking, we're going to see Piotr just play a bunch of artifacts, get a bunch of tokens, and then attack. And then turn everything sideways. Oh, yeah, there it is.
Oh my God! Is that what? a spine of Ishsa? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh baby, doing the big stuff now. He doesn't even need it. Just showing off. Is he gonna combo off now? Oh, don't do it. Just go me. infinite. Bogowski. <laughs> What is he doing? I don't know. What Has he just seen how much Martin can take? It only takes one sane person, right? If either of them is sane, <laughs> the game ends on the spot. <laughs> oh, all you need is not two crazy people. <laughs> he's comboing off, I guess. He, he, he's not playing around anything. He has way more attackers than he needs, right? Even if Martin does have Grudge or Now bolt. he's showing him that he can play Spine of Ishtar over and over again <laughs> and destroy all of your permanents. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to take right, your word for that. He's convinced Martin used to concede somehow. A little smile on Martin's face and a little smirk on canisters as well. We're going to get a game number three. <laughs> Look yeah, at Martin. And <laughs> <laughs> now, they're, now they're joking about it to each other, but... Uh, yeah, and if anyone wow. had any doubts about Spider Vista, I hope this game would put your <laughs> doubts to rest. The card belongs in the deck. It was instrumental in Piotr Gogowski win. <laughs> Absolutely key. Uh, one last uh, update from our back tables, because as you might have imagined, our other matches have, inclu uh, <laughs> have included <laughs> by now. Um, Peyon Jang on Bamp Spirits plays against uh, Yoshihiko. Yoshihiko uh, Ikawa, who was on Tron, and I say was because out. Bant Spirits advances to the semifinals. Oh, yeah. So that's your deck. And then we have Hardened Scales into the semifinals as well, for those of you just joining us. That was uh, Christopher Larson defeating Takumi there, uh, who was on Bridgevine. Up above that, we had a uh, double goldfish fight between Infect and KCI. It was Infect that ended up winning that one, two games to zero. And that leaves us with this one last match. Yeah, and you know, it was actually an interesting match in how we played out. Like, you know, Martin had the disruptive hand with the ley line, but then just didn't have much after that. And Sai bought a lot of time for Piotr, and actually he turned the gears and started being aggressive. Then he just claimed the ley line and might have put another one. So. It wasn't like nothing happened. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of things happened. It was a very interesting match. And I think you know, both players could have uh, won at different points if draws had been a little bit different. But boy, Psy Master Thopterus was the MVP there. Oh, for sure. My yeah. goodness sakes. Yeah, that card is really good against Hollow One. It, it lets you kill them through Ley Line. It produces a lot of blockers, buys you a lot of time. Buys you a lot of cards, too. Buys you sacking the artifacts if you have access to Blue Man. You know, not a given. You don't always have it, but it Piotr had a lot of it that game. And and yeah, it's just it's just the Hollow One deck doesn't have any way of dealing with it. What is it gonna do? Leave Fatal Push in? Mm. Like that card is so outrageously bad. Yep. If there is a deck that can leave an outrageously bad card in, that is Hollow One mm. because you know you just discard it to Fateless Looting or to Burning Inquiry or Godling Lore. But that is one of the, ironically, the good things about the deck is that you can afford to play some bad cards some bad when, they're, ones. when they're good. You know, Ley Line, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. A lot of decks are like, well, I have four Ley Lines, and if I draw them in opening hand, it's great, but I'm not going to play it on turn four. It's too late by then. So maybe, you know, it's really bad to, to have multiples after that. But th this deck is okay. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't afford to play four Ley Lines because you just discard them. We did see two of them discarded in that game, in fact. Yeah. No, that is a dangerous train of thought, right? Yeah. Oh, I can just bad card. That's fine. Yeah. I can just discard it. You know like, it's well, better discarding a good card that you could <laughs> yeah. have played instead. Is it better though? I think so. I think it's much better. But does it feel better? It does not feel better. Yeah. So since we have time, Marshall, uh, we, we can which go we definitely have, by the way, <laughs> if uh, anybody at home needs to go grab a sandwich, we can go back to our discussion of what is a combo deck. Oh, good. Let's do that again. Yeah. So, what do you consider a combo deck to be? If you had to define a combo deck. Wait, I want you to define it. I want to attack your Wait, argument. Why? You just want to copy my answer? No, I want to attack it. Okay, so to me, a combo deck is mm -hmm. a deck that, well, first it relies on getting multiple cards together, but it is a deck that largely ignores how the game has progressed mm -hmm. once it achieves a certain thing. So okay. it's not a deck that you know begins building an advantage and snowballs from that, or a deck that you're not trying to react to anything. It's a deck that's trying to get to a game state that ignores everything that happened previously. 
So when you're and playing, then wins. Uh, yes, uh, ideally. I mean, it could be a bad combo deck. Okay. But uh, so it, is that what you think Tron is a bad combo deck because it doesn't win? I think it does win. It doesn't I think win. It plays a big planeswalker and then the game progresses. You say go. No, and they have a massive advantage, but they don't win. It doesn't have to win on the spot, though. The see, idea I is think that it like does. I think that's where we differ. Okay. So for I want to see the, that... Pro that it, I, ev I agree with everything up until that. Once you get to that point, I want to see you win the game. Like, I don't want to see... You shouldn't ever say go after that but point. But what if I play an Emrakul and attack and you have no permanence? You're dead next turn. If you play does an Emrakul and attack, then that does count. Yeah, okay. I, I would count that. But how about Nula Because you really can't come back from that under any circumstance. But, like, Karn, you can. U Ugin depends. Ulamog, you usually can't. So that probably would, would count as well. Okay. So, yeah, to me, I see, you know, Tron is setting up this big thing. And then it's not doing anything other than setting that up. And then when it does set up, it's hoping that whatever it is it's accomplishing is going to make it's up for all the game. time it lost mm -hmm. trying to accomplish that. So maybe my definition is... Deeply maybe flawed. you know, No, it's, it's perfect. But, <laughs> but maybe I, I have the next that I think are combo and I'm constructing a definition to fit those. <laughs> you know, could be. Other than the other way around. But yeah, I don't know. In... in to me, it plays like a combo deck, right? I, you know, I, I sideboard against it like I do against a combo deck. Okay. For the most part, right? Mm -hmm. And I play against it like I play against a combo deck. So it doesn't actually matter what it is. It mm -hmm. only matters how you approach it in terms of, you know, what are you going to do to combat it? And to me, it is a combo deck in that regard. And I think even though it might not philosophically be a combo deck, you should approach it as a combo deck. Yeah, I mean, because and this makes sense. You're approaching this from the status of a player, right? Of somebody who look is looking to play against or with these decks and understand fundamentally how to interact in that way. For me, I approach them from here, from the booth, right? How do I describe these to players who maybe don't understand what's going on, haven't seen them before? And so I want it to be more defined. I want it to be... Well, look, this thing's now going... To, you know, another, another thing that I, I like about combo decks is some something... It doesn't necessarily have to be actually infinite, but arbitrarily large. Like, it can make a huge amount of mana or a huge sure. damage output or something along those lines. Also, is kind of like a hallmark to me for a, for a combo deck. Okay. Looks like we're underway in, in game number three, and they're just blazing through. We've already been been through a whole turn cycle. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> they have really sped up. Yeah, but now the decisions start, and we're going to... Pump the brakes a little here. Yeah, you, you might not want to play that land, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't play it. <laughs> Think carefully about <laughs> it. Uh-oh. Bogovsky's hitting the Kleenex. He might be... Uh, is this a concession from him? Is he crying already? <laughs> Probably not. All right, Thought Seize now from Martin Yuzda. And what does he see? KCI, oh boy, and Psymaster Thoptris, along with a Mox Opal and an Icar Wellspring for Canister. Nothing to cry about there. No, and Martin stacked hand. does have the ley line, but again, it's a little bit too late. Uh, that is a, a turn too late, in fact. Oof. So it's the, interesting. The worst possible turn to get your ley line. I think he should probably just go for Psy here. It doesn't look like he's very well equipped to bid it. And then he hopes to beat the case high in another way. Mm -hmm. Right? Because Peter doesn't have the combo, right? He just has KCI and he will have equal wellspring. So I think, yeah, he, he agrees with that. I think the Psy is the card that can beat you with the least amount of draws from Piotr. I think the, the KCI could definitely beat you, but it requires, you know, more, I think. Mm -hmm. And you have more outs to it, ironically. Like, normally not the case, but if you have Ancient Grudge, you can kill the KCI. And you, you can't kill the Psy with any one card. And, of course, if you, get, if you do get to four mana, then you get to play the Ley Line, and that already kind of... Not blanks, but that already kind of deals with a lot of the issues that KCI generates. That's right. Martin is may have a hard time getting to that point. Although, wow, Tassiger the Golden Fang on the battlefield right now. That was the last land, though, out of hand for Martin Yuza. So he's going to be looking to draw a few more lands to actually get that ley line down, if that is part of the game plan. But in the meantime, he has to pass the turn back, but he's got pressure. He's knocked Kukovsky off of his... Uh, off of balance just a little bit with that thought seize. And we're going to see what Piotr can put back together by playing a land, getting an Echo Wellspring, and then, uh, and then we'll see where he goes from there. 
Oh boy, it looks like you set Chad on fire with that conversation, PV. Well done. It's a very interesting conversation. Loved it. Good job. <laughs> oh, we can go further if you want. How about <laughs> aggro control? Oh, oh tempo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we never talk tempo. Oh, it's, it's forbidden? Yeah, can't do it. Chat never comes back from that one. Tempo? Yeah. Velocity? It's a no, you can talk velocity. Velocity okay. is okay, yeah. The fire? The fire, the, That's yeah. That's the forbidden word in our, in our testing team is well, momentum. Yeah. Momentum is momentum. the forbidden word. Yeah. yeah. The fire is, you can talk about the fire all you want, although that's more Luis's expertise. So Faithless Looting is going to put Flame Wake Phoenix and a Goblin Lore in the graveyard for Yuza. Still has his attack step as well for that Flame Wake Phoenix, so six damage incoming. Yeah, and interestingly, he I, I mean, he did not discard the Ley Line. If I agree with that. Obviously, he just wants to play it next uh, turn the very next turn if he can. Yeah. It's going to be tough for him to cast it next turn. He's going to have to cold top deck a land to do it. And I think that's going to be the deciding factor of the game, honestly. I think... Uh, never mind. Ooh. <laughs> Slime Master Thopterus was one of the draw steps there for Piotr Gluowski, and all of a sudden, Plan B is very much in effect, and Martin Yuzu's hand looks so much worse now. And the one Mishra's bobble comes in and makes a Thopter <laughs> right away as well. Yeah, I think Martin really wants a land here. Instead, he found a Flame Wake Phoenix. Eh, pretty close. <laughs> What does Martin use his game plan now? He thought seized away that original Psy, but, uh, but a replacement found his way into Piotr Gugowski's hand, and all of a sudden Yuza is facing down a much different set of threats than he was planning for this whole game. Yeah, isn't it frustrating <laughs> when you thought he's a legend and they draw another one, or oh, when yeah. you go through great lengths to kill it? It's completely unfair. And it's just like, oh yeah, there's another one. It's even worse than, than normal. All right, Goblin Lore. Martin Yuzu is going to leave his fate in the hands of the goblins. And what did he hit? Well, he got the phoenix and that redundant Tassiger in the yard, so that could be that could be worse. Although a hollow one as well has now been discarded. Oh, yeah. That means that he's got the uh, ley line in his hand still. He's also got a mountain and something else. So his... He yeah, just has to try to race at this it. point. Oh, I think I think so. Ugh. I mean, his he has two hopes, right? Either he races or he plays a ley line and and hopes that's enough. But I mean, the Phoenix has to attack to begin with, so mm. that doesn't give you a lot of choices there. That part's easy. And the Tazigor is four damage versus one damage that you take from the side, since it doesn't block the Thoughtridge anyway. Right. So that one's probably attacking too. Okay, we're going to bring back the other Flame Wake Phoenix, so everybody into the red zone. Piotr's just going to chump block the Tassiger, take four drop to nine. Martin's also at nine, though. Oh, and he found Gurmog Angler off of that Street Wraith. He also has the four mana available to cast the Ley Line next turn as well. Yeah, now Piotr has a couple of draw steps to, to flat out win the game here, I think. Uh, he does have the, the KSI in hand, and he has the April Wellspring, and Psy plus KCI is basically infinite mana. So all he has to do is find stuff. And he, he has the Inventor's Fair. So that's already oh, wow. stuff. So I believe he is in a, a good position here. Though he doesn't have any stars or spheres, so the, the loop is not... Like, he's not going to loop too much right now, I don't think. But, but he could generate a lot of advantage... Right. Attack. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's planning on sacking that thing. Yeah, he's playing KCI, then I believe he's sacking both his Thopters. Ooh, he has a star in his hand now as well. Okay, so he's playing KCI. I believe he's sacking both his Thopters to activate Inventor Sphere. Uh, then he's going to get the Scrap Trawler, but the issue here is that he has to, you know, he will have to sack the Zikra Wellspring before, I believe. Just to get to enough mana? Yeah, or, or he can play the star. But he will have to sack one artifact earlier than he would want to. 
Oh, he's, he can sack the Mox. So he oh, he does have a Mox Opal, yeah. He sacks the Mox and the three Topters. Okay, or not. Or sacks the Star. Yeah, I think I like playing fair here. Then you sack. I wouldn't call this playing fair, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really don't understand why he would rather keep a top third than the chromatic star. Like, he really wanted to draw a card, but I don't think that changes how he plays. So he kind of just missed some lands there, unless I'm missing something. But anyway, uh, I think, yeah, now he's going to sack both top thirds to play the, the Ironworks. And then still doesn't have a loop that I can see, but we'll get to draw a ton of cards. Yeah, so he's going to play the Scrap Trawler off of that. Now, he, he sacks it, you know, he can sack the Wellspring, he will get back the Star, and then with the Star, he can actually cast the Ancient Stirrings. So he will see a lot of cards here, and he will have access to basically unlimited mana. And what's the key card that he needs to see here to actually complete the loop? Oh, I think this does it, a, a redundant. Scrap Trawler. Oh, he's got an extra Scrap Trawler now. Yeah, I believe that is a loop. No, that's not a loop. Boy, Sai Mathrothopter is really doing work, even when he's going off here by producing all this extra mana through these Thopters, too. It's a really impressive card. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I was wrong. It's not actually a loop, but... But he still gets... He, he needs the Mirror Retriever at this point, or a second KCI. A second KCI would actually be a loop, because then he would be able to sack the KCI to return the Scrap Trawler. He's cruising now. I think. Ooh, here comes Ancient Sturians to try to find himself a Mirror Retriever or another KCI. Yeah, but well, this is in a, a spot where, you know, even if he fizzles, what does fizzling even look like? He has 100 right. Thopters. Yeah. Boy, I'd like to fizzle like that. This looks really good here for Klugowski to get past the Juggernaut. Martin Yuza, he ran over this entire tournament during the Swiss with this Hollow One deck, but he may have met his match here in the semis. Canister, Piotr Gugowski, now right in the middle of going off oh with yeah, KCI. Ob obviously, I'm, stu I'm stupid. You, you need the, the Retriever to, to loop with, even with the second KCI. Yeah, there are a lot of loops on that deck, and they all include the KCI, the Scrap Trawler, and I believe the Retriever as well. He's going to run us out of Thopter tokens at this rate as well. Boy, oh boy. I think we'll be fine. You think he might find a way out here somehow to, uh, <laughs> to win this game? Well, he's really looking for the spine of Ishtha at this point. His favorite. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Scrap Trawler number three joins the team. Mox Opal, and by the way, Glukowski is cruising here. He's playing this very quickly now. Well, Certainly finally. Certainly appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm happy about it. And he's going to start drawing cards off of Psy using that blue mana. Mox Opal, boy. Martin Yuza just has to sit there head in hands and stare at this. He's got to know this is just about over, though. An impressive run for Yuza, uh, another GP top 8 on his resume. He stands alone, the most GP top 8s of any player ever. By two, right? By, yeah, he's two clear of Shuhei Nakamura. Martin really came up through the GP ranks. Now, of course, he's in the Hall of Fame. After having a bunch of success at the Pro Tour as well. Professional tourist. <laughs> That's how he defines his career. And uh, it looks like this one's going to come to an end for him, though. <laughs> this is just absurd. <laughs> Look at how many tokens he has. Yeah. <laughs> did he brick? I think he found nature's claim. What did he nature's claim? 1, 2, claim? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I think he nature's claim one of his own thopters. Oh. No, if Schneider's claim, uh, yeah. Up to 13. <laughs> that is for the bobble, so now he gets to replay the bobble. Remember, he's getting three Scrap Trawler triggers per now, so the Pyrite Spellbomb going to the graveyard draws him a card from it and then gets him three cards back two opals and a bobble. Yeah, he has enough here. He doesn't actually need an infinite loop. 
you know, your opponent is only at 20, or in this case, 8. Mm -hmm. So you need to loop four times effectively. With the pirate so he spell didn't, It turns out he didn't actually need the, the mirror retriever. He only did the second scrap trawler. But... And here we go. Starting to cash Thopters in for mana. Here's another Cart Clan Ironworks. Boy, Canister's putting on a show here. Oh yeah, that's probably the, the most amount of of collective time spent watching gold fishing. Mm. He's definitely pushing the boundaries at this point. <laughs> Because he, he was actually very unlucky to not have found the loop at this point. <laughs> Maybe he's taken it out. Oh, all the mirror retrievers? <laughs> Maybe. That seems unlikely. <laughs> he might have taken out one. You still have one, I think, to search for. Yeah, that's probably true. Well, yeah, maybe he he's took out both. In, he's running Inventor's Fair. He had the spine. Lex game, so... Well... All the scrap trawlers. Use it takes a quick glance at his hand again, but that's not going to be relevant this time. <laughs> what is this? It's water packed. <laughs> and there's Spine of Ish. So is going to show it to him and says, I'm going to blow up all your permanents while I'm at it. And all you can do is smile. Congratulations to Peter Glugowski. He has now moved on to the semifinals here at GP Atlanta. Took a bit of doing, but he made it. So that's KCI in. That's Infect. That's who he's going to be playing against. And then on the bottom half, it's going to be Hardened Scales versus Bant Spirits. So. Oh, so you mean we're not going to watch KCI again? Only one combo deck left. Wait, Hardest Scales is in combo? Depending on how you define it. <laughs> I knew he was going to go there with that one. So, yeah, that is sets up our semifinals here on Sunday Night Magic from Atlanta. It was a bit of a grind there in our uh, quarters, but we are now getting players seated and ready to go in the semis. So we're going to take a short commercial break. But when we come back, semifinal time. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 